Good Wednesday morning, my dear Christian brother or sister, as we only have about three days left in our year. I hope that today finds you well. I hope you're looking forward to the new year and new promises. But even more important, I hope you're living your very best life in Jesus Christ. And to that end, I think it's time for us to do a little bit of end of the year evaluation. You see, as I pointed out in my sermon on Sunday, it's vitally important and frankly scripturally valid to stop on a regular basis for self-evaluation, and this time of year is perfect for it. See, this way we cut out the dead wood from our lives and get rid of unproductive attitudes and thoughts that harm our relationship with Christ and, well, others, as we prepare for, hopefully, the wonderful things he will bless us with in the year 2022. I also pointed out the importance of being willing to learn from our mistakes and trials without choosing to brood about them or and allow these things to spoil our attitudes in the present and in the future. Truth is that a lot of times when people are told things they don't want to hear, they want to kill the messenger. Well, okay. The truth is none of us that can, can truthfully say we haven't passed through a difficult season in the last two years. And whenever you pass through a season, it's important that we realize that our attitudes have changed, some for the better, some for the worse. To deny this is to deny the very lessons God intends to teach us, the things that we have learned in the last couple of years. And this is why we need to look back at the past, but we need to look back, learn, and then leave. Paul understood this very well when he wrote in Philippians 3, 4, 3, 13 and 14, but this thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me. So as we leave 2021, I'm going to spend a few moments examining what I learned from 2021 and the things that I think we all should have learned and that we should carry as a Christian into 2022. And these are things we all need to remember. And frankly, it's part of my function to remind people. First, church gatherings and fellowship are one of the most undervalued and unappreciated things in the world and they seem to be getting worse. And yet, we seem to have many folks who are still not attending services regularly. I cannot help but observe that these same folks seem to be more than willing to go to other places and do other things, but yet when you talk to them, they are afraid or being cautious or being prudent when it comes to attending church. Well, speaking as a pastor, and I cannot quite understand this attitude. I mean, this trend is unnatural and debilitating, both to us individually, spiritually, and, and, and to the church. I don't fear Omicron COVID as much as I fear that we have failed to recognize how important it is to be with others in regular fellowship, in study, and in prayer. I know that in my case, I didn't realize how much I was gaining from being in church every week until it was missing, or how much I have in the past taken Wednesday nights and Sundays for granted in my life. And you know, I've tried to learn, and I pray I'll never take these things for granted again. But I fear that we are entering a phase now where folks just don't see the need to attend church anymore. I fear that we're in the danger of turning our church into a service industry instead of a ministry. Now the difference is that a service industry is there for our use, where a ministry is where we are called to his use as well as the use of others. One's based on self and the other's based on serving Christ. I'm sorry, that's the truth. In the first, we're consumers, free to do whatever is good for us. But in the second, we are to do what is best for others and Christ. Paul reminded us a long time ago in Hebrews 10, 23 through 25, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, boy does that sound current, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. I'm, I'm sorry, I hate to say this, we've become a bit comfortable with just bowing out of service, claiming fear or caution, not realizing the damage this is doing to us and the church. And frankly, that's a poor substitute for being in church. Now, now don't misunderstand me. 
for a while we were in very special circumstances and that our safety required us to accept that we needed to do things differently for a while. And I'm truly thankful that we have had the resources needed to go online to meet the needs of others as best we can. There are certainly still people who need that. God has certainly blessed us in that respect. But hopefully we've learned that nothing takes the place of good old-fashioned worship service with the family and Bible study. I mean, I'm sorry, I can't help but look around and kind of throw up my hands in despair and say, where is the need to learn scripture? Where is the need to be with the family in person? Is it gone? As I said, I fear we have learned the wrong lesson in 2021. The idea that church is optional, doctrine is optional, Bible study is optional, service is optional, and fellowship is optional. I know that's harsh. But as we move forward into a brand new year, it's important that we look back and learn. As 2022 begins, let us remember how we felt to be denied the fellowship we need and then crave with brothers and sisters in Christ that love us, care for us, and as Paul said, spur us on toward love and good deeds. We need to promise ourselves and our Lord that we will never again take for granted that we can go to church and worship. We need to make a promise. We need to make a vow, not a resolution, but a plan to become more regular in our attendance. I mean, let's just be honest. Christ could return in 2022, and if he does, how do you think he's going to respond to Christians who see themselves as consumers and not servants, not providers? I hate to say this, but do the words lukewarm and spew you from my mouth ring any bells? Like I said, maybe it's a bit harsh. Maybe. But it needs to be said. We need to ask ourselves, do we serve or are we waiting to be served? And the truth is, each one of us needs to answer that question. I don't know about you, but I'm here to serve. And I call us all to serve. So today, as we look and learn, let us leave that old attitude of complacency. And as Paul tells us, keep moving forward into a bright future. God has and will provide for us. And he calls upon us to do our part. Because I don't know about you, but I see that glorious day approaching. And it could quite easily be in the year 2020, 2022. I mean, don't you look for that too? Can't you see it? I hope you make the day a wonderful day. I hope to see everyone in Bible study tonight. And, of course, I want you to know that I'm here should you need me. I truly love you all, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.